In this video, we consider impulse responses and structural VAR models. Consider again the vector autoregressive model of order k. Recall that the contemporaneous effects in the model are captured in this omega matrix, namely the covariance matrix of the error vector. On the other hand, the other model parameters, namely the, those contained in the constant vector mu and parameters contained in the autoregressive matrices pi1 up to pi k are quite tricky to interpret directly. But we may interpret the coefficients in relation to so-called impulse response analysis. The main idea is to consider what happens to the variables in the system and the variables contained in set t if there is a shock at time t to the error term epsilon t. Of course, there will be some instantaneous response, and then there will be some dynamic responses over time. So a shock at time t to the error term may affect the entire system in, in future periods, say in time t plus 1, time t plus 2, and so forth. It is quite convenient to write down the VAR model in moving average form. So we can always uh, write set t as epsilon t plus some terms containing the error terms until time t equal to 1, and then we have some initial condition uh, c0. We can then figure out what happens to the set variable if, if there is a shock to the error term. So we can see if we just differentiate this equation here with respect to epsilon t, we would get an identity matrix, or we actually differentiate with respect to epsilon t prime. So this is a p times p matrix, and it's given by the identity matrix. So a, a matrix with ones on the, the diagonal and zeros elsewhere. We can also consider what happens to set t plus one if there's a shock at time t, and this is given by the c1 matrix by simply just moving this system here one period ahead, and likewise for, for c2. Then the main idea is that these uh, C matrices here are some rather complicated functions of the original parameters in the model. These derivatives here may be represented in, in some graphs, and, and, and these graphs here we, we label as impulse response functions. A simple example is the, the bivariate VAR model for the growth rate in consumption and income that we have estimated in a previous video. And here we can see that a shock to the error term in the equation for the consumption gives a response of 1 to the change in income at, at time 0. On the other hand, there is no instantaneous effect on the income variable. And likewise, if there is a, a shock to the error term in the, the y variable, uh, then there's no instantaneous effect on the, the consumption variable and so forth. Um, but as, as, as time moves on, there, there might be some responses due to, due to the structure of these uh, C matrices. When we plot these impulse responses in oxmetrics, we do not automatically get these uh, confidence bands on the uh, impulse response functions. But later on in this course, I'll show you a piece of code that does the job. And later on in this video, I will show you how to compute the impulse responses for our model. One drawback of this analysis here is that, as I have already touched upon, the impulse responses do not capture any instantaneous or contemporaneous effects, meaning that, that for instance, as I mentioned, if there is a shock in the consumption equation, then there, this does not carry over instantaneously to the uh, equation for the, uh, for the income variable. So this is simply ignored for this analysis. As I mentioned, this might be problematic in the sense that the error terms are typically correlated, and this correlation is captured by the omega matrix. Instead, we may write the model on structural form identically to the ADL model that we saw in a previous video. In particular, we may have a trivariate system containing some income variable, uh, a wealth variable, and, and a consumption variable. And we may consider a VAR model for these three variables. 
we can then pre-multiply by some matrix C, A0. And this pre-multiplication implies that the new error term labeled U1 up to U3 have a diagonal uh, covariance matrix, meaning that these errors here are uncorrelated. And this kind of model here is, is denoted a so-called structural VAR model. The, the main idea is that this structural VAR model imposes some causal ordering in the model. In particular, if, if we re rewrite uh, this model here and simply have yt, wt and, and ct as the left-hand variable in, in each equation, we have the following system here. So it says that the yt variable is essentially just a, the usual equation from a, from a VAR model. And if there is a shock to, to U1, it will have an impact directly on, on the YT variable. In the second equation, we have that the wealth variable is now a, an ADL equation where we have the YT variable as a right-hand variable. So it means that if there is a shock to U1, it will have an impact on YT, but because of that YT also enters the equation for WT, it will also have an impact directly on the wealth variable. And likewise for the consumption variable, we will both have we will have both YT and WT entering as right-hand variables. So again, we have an, an ADL model for CT. So there will be some direct causal ordering in this model, meaning that, that YT will have an effect on WT. So income will have an effect on, on wealth and income and wealth will have a direct impact on the consumption variable. From an economic point of view, this causal ordering may actually be fairly reasonable. Let us try to estimate this equation system. Consider again the data set with the Danish macro variables and we have the yearly change in consumption and in income and in wealth. Let us try to set up a trivariate VAR1 model for these variables. And first, let us just try to estimate the usual uh, VAR1 model. This gives us three equations, and we can see that there is some correlation between the errors in this system here. And we can compute the impulse response. Let us just try to consider 15 periods ahead. And the impulse responses here look as, as follows. And for instance, if there's a unit shock to the error term in the income equation, then there, this will corresponds to a, a one unit shock initially, and then the effect dies out. But we can see here, uh, this shock to the uh, income does not have an inst instantaneous effect on wealth and consumption, but it of course, has an effect over time due to due to the structure of the VAR model. Let us now try to estimate the, the structural VAR model instead. So here we choose simultaneous equations model. Now we first consider the equation for the income variable and recall here that that this was just the usual uh, VAR one equation. So so here we don't have to to change anything. Then we have the, the equation for the wealth variable. And here we inc include the change at time t in, in income. And then we had the lag variables from the uh, VAR1 term. And then lastly, we have the equation for the consumption variable. And here we include both the change in income and change in wealth at, at time t. We estimate these equations here, equation by equation by least squares, which means that we do not estimate the correlation between the error terms in these uh, models here, but because this correlation is by construction equal to zero. We get this trivariate equation system and we can again try to compute the impulse responses. What has now changed is that, that still, if, if there's a shock to the income variable, of course, this 
spills over directly to the income variable at time zero. So there's an instantaneous shock, but this now also happens to, to the, the wealth variable and to the consumption variable because the YT variable in, in, was included in the equation for, for these two variables. On the other hand, due to the structure of this structural model, uh, the, the income is not instantaneously aff affected by a shock to the wealth variable and likewise to, the, to a shock in the consumption variable. So I, I tried to compare the, the, the impulse responses from the reduced form bar models to those of the structural models. Here we can, we can see that, that they differ for the two models. So in the, the, the red lines here from the reduced form models and and the blue curves are from the, the structural models. The, the scale is, is slightly different because instead of, of choosing a, a one unit shock, I, I chose a shock corresponding to one standard deviation of the error terms. But the, the shape of the impulse responses are identical. Thank you for watching this video.